the with pass block and intentionally left parts of my field weak and intentionally left it in uh, three squares range. So you could make the three squares of movement to get in the way. It didn't strictly need to get in the way, so it'd be like a man here, a man here, and you'd just leave the receiver open. And uh, slide across two, get the uh, pass block intercept. And with, you know, AG4, AG5 with uh, catch, not really too difficult if you can do it in an unmarked position. Not something you really want to rely on, that's why most, uh, most people playing ultra competitively won't get pass block. Because you're still making your whole play around an intercept. Uh, even if you're not putting all, uh, all, all the eggs in the intercept basket, there is uh, still the ability to move someone three squares. And doing actions in your opponent's turn. Kind of like, uh, like I know my control in Hearthstone can be quite game changing. So someone that thinks their catch is open, or receiver open, or thrower open, if they're not really paying attention, or there's a catcher relevant to the throw, uh, not only getting the intercept chance, but also tagging the guy throwing it, making the throw unsuspectingly harder. Um, and look, against the high off, there might be some balls thrown. Uh, quick counter at the two teams. Lodge over for an Aryan, a uh, Agility 5 thrower, the absolute dream. Lodge Shorehands, what more could you want? And does have a kick option, does have an AG5 Dancer. Uh, no strip though. AG5 Dancer, four Strength Dancer. It's absolutely terrifying. Uh, this is the reason that many people have bet all of their Fash points on an Aryan. The AG5 and Strength uh, options on the Dancers. Uh, Blodge Everall, single guard. Movement tree, so no jump up rolls. Um, but aside from these dancers, nothing too, and the pass block, nothing too outrageous. I am too, Muldripster. Pass block action can be quite exciting. It'll be interesting to see if he does it uh, for the purpose of getting the intercept, which I don't think he would because that's low percentage, or just for the potential to harass someone. It's picked up as a third skill. After a uh, sidestep. Whereas a traditional build might be diving tackle. Even shadowing. And uh, no tackle for the High Elves. A stellar 9 move 1 turn threat, as well as a 4 strength uh, 9 move threat. Induced Morg. I don't know if Morg is the one. What does Morg really do that the Wood Elf team says, Oh, oh no, there's a there's a strong guy in the way. Is he just going to be blocking a tree? Is his plan to tag the tree every turn, try to put it on the ground? So the tree's not making a three dice mighty blow? I can't really see that as mattering. Um, I was with a two-man bench, they're not likely to lose on attrition. Like, maybe any other star player and a wizard might have been a better choice. Like, to have an Agi 5 Blitzer hanging around and react post bolt. Or a four strength catcher to move nine squares and react past, uh, post uh, bolt. Or as a ball carrier. Well, you have the dilemma of the learner ball carrier. But I guess. It would give red die blocks. It was more because a ball carry a little crazy. And is there frenzy? Doesn't seem to be frenzy dancers. Yep. Any star player and a wizard. And no, just the single wrestle. And so without the wrestle tackle, uh, we'll struggle to take down a dancer. Of the four strength guys that he does have, uh, meaning they would both need to power dancer. 
And I just don't think Morg makes up for that. Um, unless he has four rerolls willy nilly, as we know the kick. Oh, baby. As we know, the kill event was a quick snap and not a free reroll. Maybe bought a reroll? With his money? With his cyanide inducements? Uh, seems a bit weird, though. He doesn't seem the type of player that needs a bunch of rerolls. And really has the inbuilt skills to do what he needs to do. Look, that might be good enough to disincentivize it. I was thinking uh, a five-man commitment to surf the side step dancer might not be bad. Got distracted mid-sentence. But yeah, look, I, I just can't see him taking down these dancers. I think these are all feigned. I think an iron will stall. With no tackle to really be worried about and only giving one blitz per turn. Doing this crazy formation if your opponent runs around to meet it. Um, with just a single double guard. And not really scared. I mean, run away from Morg, don't take the mighty low hit, but. Yeah, this is not, <laughs> this is not a two turn offense. Uh, however, we did see. The no real would off go for uh, you know a two turn offense against you know slower bash teams uh, in the World Cup, and that's the strength. Well, the, I guess that's sort of the catch twenty two with the build is that yeah you're gonna fail a two dice block at some point. Uh, I didn't in my <laughs> in my game yesterday, but it will happen. So it's better to fail it on defense than it is on offense. Scoring early on your one thirty six throw into your 136 catch uh, seems fine. Interesting that there's uh, two throwers also. Like, this guy's sexy. Like, what more could you want? I guess just in, in the time played wanted to get agile in on one of them. Uh, must have bought into it as well. It could be a really strange skill for someone that didn't already have Shorehand's Blodge. Oh yeah, look, the slower thrower is likely radically older. And look, they are L, so it is just two cost dodges with dodge. I didn't see where this guy came from. Uh, it's hard to say no, scouting, but can you realistically recover? And seven mighty blow hits on a dwarf will only remove someone what, one in ten times. So I, I I really don't think, and you'd only then on those seven get a successful fireball on three or four, and so you would not realistically expect a Kaz. On a dwarf. If it's a seven man wood elf, yes. Seven man dwarf, no. Uh, if you can recover, if it's a if it's a seven man cage and all you need is one to go down to be able to block the ball carrier for two dice, then yes. But yeah. Armor eight beastman look not bad. If you think you can blitz the ball as a result of getting one or two down from that fireball. And recover it, perhaps. It's hard to say without seeing it. Well, 
Cool. Bit of posturing. Yeah, look hard for the uh, high elves to really meet everything. And the downfield catcher will be, for the most part, not bothered. Single GFI to, to tag it. Single GFI early in the turn. Shows he's a little bit pressured. And yeah, look, Morg's just doing nothing here. Nothing. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> no cake. In fact, from the January 31st with Conan... World of Conan Exiles, or Conan, Conan Exiles, that's it. With that coming out, there will seldom be any more Blood Bowl. Hmm. Alright, so this is really, really strange. If the rationale is, I'm gonna risk GFIs early in my turn, with people still based, to go and tag this catcher, to then not tag this dancer? Seems a bit weird. Yeah, Conan O'Brien, that's it. It's like he's in two minds as to what to do. And even tagging for naught with an immediate uh, two die for a push to clear if he did want it. Hand off to the thrower, the throw to the catcher, you could score immediately this turn for two 1 in 36 risks. Wow, imagine if it happens. Oh man. You know, and Narin could have scouted his opponent's last 10 matches and made a read on him. And he might be confident enough turning, turning him over and scoring. He might have seen this Morgan inducement being equally as perplexed as I am. And, uh... And being content just to blow the score out. That was the riskiest play with the, uh, of the sequence in the 1 and 6. From here it's just two 1 and 36s. Which is still scary, but... Not really. Uh, with all my on the sideline, it is an early touchdown, so look, I'm really surprised. Well, I have to ask him after the match. Uh, it'll be like rust, cake or death. Yeah, I'll have to ask him after the match what what the rationale behind the early score is, like, high olds can count at score? Is, is that what it's going to be, the old, uh... Everyone sends men's downs and just scores as quick as they can? I mean, the correct play for the high elf now is to stall to turn 8, score, and then stall eight, stall 8 turns and score himself. Uh, no strip from an RM. It would be... 1Ds on a 4 strength, or a 3 plus leap for the 1D on the 4 strength. Or uh, the 2 plus leap on the 3 strength. Uh, both dancers have tackle, so 1D 5 plus. Yeah, so that's, tra that's traditionally why you don't do it. High elf still still 8. Holds onto the ball. Has guard on cage corners to deny dancer leaps. Dancers don't have strip. That's not a high percentage play. And a, a stall to 8 into just holding the ball for 8 turns. And because Wolf Bainson's receiving in the second half, he can truly just make a cage. Could put it in Morg's hands. Probably not, though. Actually, Morg's... Yeah, look, Cape was right earlier. I think it might have been Killzio. I can't remember. 
Six Strength Morgue, making the dice red, makes the one in nine success on Morgue fairly unrealistic. And then just guard on the corners, two die blocks to push them away. Doing that for eight turns isn't tough. And just holds the ball for the second half. Oh, really? You can hear the static? The fan's not even on me. Alright. I'm gonna finish my morning cigarette and then go and turn that fan off. And look, once again, a testament to the format. Uh, high Elf Coach, really underdeveloped, doesn't have a single tackle on the team, if I'm not mistaken. Which I'm not. Uh, so a... A two-strength catcher. Yeah, could get three dice pretty easy. Plenty of four-strength options with a single assist. Could get a three dice. And he could look to send people down. It doesn't look like he is. Looks like he's making the right choice of what I think. Is... Uh, stalling till turn eight. But look, three dice for a power. Not too tough. Oh, um, is there really static, or is, or are we just tripping? Are we are we doing memes? No, it it was not. Alright, just for you guys, I've turned the fan off. Yeah, look, if we were going to see the Morgue Carrier, uh, it would have been a touchback to Morgue, for sure. I mean, does definitely, definitely uh, need to score an 8. Plenty of time to do it on Morgue. Morgue can always hand off to a Agi Elf. Wow, first section Lona Blitz. Yeah, three die for one in twenty seven, but two die blocks with block for the one in thirty six, strictly better. In fact with the capacity to reroll the the two dies. Um should not have been first action loner. Really? Nah, it's not that loud. I watched the VOD briefly. Uh, last night with the fan on and it didn't sound too bad but tell you what for the final matches let's have it at least attempting to sound good right first session line of blitz not the one inherent risk for no reason actually it's, it's not a 1 in 27 because he's got block maybe it was strictly safer Nah, but look, even if you do triple skull, it's not something you, you can reroll. Maybe he wasn't going to reroll a double skull. So, alright, look, I take that back. Three dice with block. I will, I will tolerate as a first action. I prefer it didn't happen. Like, how, how do you lose your offense? It's your first block, triple skulls into uh, the ball being immediately threatened. I mean, he's not being sacked, so it's, and even that's not bad. I don't... Is any surprise that the thrower is there out of range? Alright, I've rescinded my criticism of first action triple skulls. But still, if there's one thing safer than triple skulls, it's quad skulls. Uh, Naren's play is going to be 100% the assist uh, for the blitz into the tree, and the th tree for three dice. Getting people on the tree is his go-to move, and it's absolutely the right thing to do. Three dice blocks with Mighty Blow, uh, in addition to the blitz. Hard to say no to.
Yeah, there is. Screen could have been tighter. I like to make the base contact. Um, clearing first. Uh, the rationale is, you know, if you're in base contact and you fail it, you're on the ground. No one, or there's fewer men in contact. Whereas if the blitz to uh, that that comes from not contact uh, fails, the guys in contact they get to free. So not giving those blocks on the blitz failing, and making the not blitz first. And then a throw that couldn't be reached, uh, two man protection, opens up a huge portion of the field. Edgy man will be pretty tempting. I think the plan will now change from the uh, the blitz to push into the tree. I think it'll change to the blitz on the edgy. He probably wants to tag someone without dodge. Tag more than one. While still controlling a relevant part of the field. Wouldn't mind chasing Morg, I don't imagine. Or at least working towards chasing Morg. Yeah, being relevant to Morg. Or tagging two. Including one who didn't have a lineman. Uh, is finals the wrong word to use? It's, it is the finals, as in, is the top 16. It is not the final of the finals. Press 1 if you'd like it to change the top 16. Press 2 if you're happy with the word finals to indicate that this is a playoff match and not a random match. Yeah, so with the tree moving, it's not going to be Blitz and the Lineman, but it used to be the Blitz and the Lineman. Uh, assist for the Mighty Blow also allows for the screen. Uh, the thrower, strong arm with pass. I can't see it. I can't see someone's go to play being the throw. To a not catcher. Well, every elf can do it. I don't think they need. Oh man, a wild drunk pack appears. Is it clickbait? I don't reckon it is. I can't remember what people said. I can't even remember the one that I asked. I'm terrible like that. I go and say press 1 for something and no one, no one presses it. What was 1? I think 1 was... Something different. You want to fight, mate? I know where you live. I literally know where you live. Wow! Easiest 100 points of your life. No, there we we do not do fun streams here. Missed, missed a brief recap though. And some stellar war dancers. Uh, admittedly, there is the equal uh, four strength blitzer and AG five blitzer from the Isles that could match it. But an AG five dancer and a four strength dancer, the absolute dream. Uh, both coaches one turn capable too. The uh, I-Elf has the 9-move catcher. But I do loop hack. I do! One time, uh, Joe asked me for your address. And I was like, what do you want his address for? <laughs> Are you gonna murder him? And he goes, no, no. I imagine it's arrived already, but he was gonna send you a present in the mail. And so I, I did technically, literally, as it actually happened, give your address out to someone on the internet. It actually happened. But it was Joe, so I think you'd be alright with that. Cool, so middling threat from an RN. Uh, did make the blitz on the Agi with Mighty Blow. Look, 
isn't making a huge effort to stop at the two-man screen on the left. Somewhat good enough. And it could... Could blitz away the uh, dodge lineman pretty easy. Still catch it on a 2+. Plus. And... Uh, single GFI after dodge from tackle. Could get in. They look, he could see the crazy scoring attempts. Well, no, it's... <laughs> I live adjacent to the water in a waterfront apartment. And because I live in a waterfront apartment, I used to, when not streaming, just have all the doors and windows open. And the uh, sea breeze would flow through the whole apartment. Now, I would never go to the ocean, because it's for poor people. But I would uh, have the cool ocean breeze go everywhere, but... I like to have doors and windows shut to not have traffic be super loud. But when traffic's not super loud, I have the fan on, so I guess it's a catch-22. Yeah, it doesn't smell bad, and the breeze is cool. And yeah, I get to also keep an eye on the refugees. So if I ever see some odd-looking people on a boat uh, attempt to land ashore, I can feel like I'm doing my part for Australian border security. Well, there you go. Morgue being used for three die blitzes. I guess that's fair enough. It's a single mighty blow option. Maybe that was a temptation. Morgue for mighty blows on AV7s. A guard corner cage. Allowed to stand next to a catcher with a stun. Uh, is, however, a non blocking thrower, and a four strength guy was a little more relevant, which he's not. Um, still gets. <laughs> oh, baby! Uh, still gets a one die, even with the guard assist. Uh, one die, three success on the thrower. With that in mind, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the four strength guy look to maneuver himself upwards. Also, a bit shame, a bit of a shame to see an immediate block. Yeah, so look, quad skulls pretty bad, but didn't really matter. Now yeah, down to two rolls, turn four. Wouldn't have mind uh, holding it for later shenanigans, as the block really didn't matter. Doesn't manage to get edgy mans. But uh, yeah, wouldn't mind seeing the lineman tree and down the lineman move somewhere first. I mean, I've just seen his quad skull, we know it's possible. You can say, yeah, I'm going to make my blocks with block, and yeah, look, a thousand games in a row, and you might be fine. A thousand actions in a row, and you might be fine. But the reason you always do your save plays first, and plan out your turn, and do the things that matter, that don't involve dice before doing things with dice, is for the quad skulls. And you can say, yeah, I was unlucky, and yeah, you were unlucky. But it's your own fault when you have the capacity to do something that involves no dice and you don't do it. There's little sympathy here. And this will be the tree on Morg. So yeah, look, good positioning from Anara in the previous turn. We did think that he would want to try and tie up Morg. If anyone's going to do it, it will be a tree. Uh, no more three dice blocks on catches. So really good job maneuvering the tree to the left. Tagging two men's. Had the capacity to get it free, still has the blitz in hand that could have freed someone from the tree. I did join him, but those are on greedy surfs. Uh, I, I, I stopped playing, I haven't played it since yesterday. No Atlas. Oh, sorry, uh, Katlevma. Lemma. Katlevma. Mmm, mmm, I'm the same. I'm a neuroscientist! Mm. I do it manually. There is, however, a, uh, a sage command. However, I've set it to be Jimmy only, as he is the official of Balls Mr. Nice. I'm 
<laughs> Never mind, dumb. This is cute, the Dodger Dodgen. Uh, let's see him 2 to his own throw, depending on the Agi 5 a little more. Wow! Um, I have not, Thor. Yours are still there, but it's it's very long. Don't do it, please. <laughs> uh, good old free rrrg. Easiest 100 points of your life. Cool. Uh, look, it's a hefty commitment to a uh, to an AG5 receiver without catch. And yeah, it still catches on 2+, plus even if Mark still dodges out really, really easily. Uh, like two rolls, the pseudo catch. Um, by scoring early, and Aaron's really said that he's confident in his ability to turn this high off over. And he hasn't really made a huge play at turning this high off over. He's made the correct steps, though. The tree tying up Morg. Uh, and a, an attempt at a screen. Denying the scoring play as best he can. But the high also just move up here, cage. And be well in position to score with just the ball carrier. Maybe as he gets closer, that's when the leap might happen. I don't think it's any coincidence that the two guard guys are tagged by Blodge Step. Um, it will discourage. Oh, baby. <laughs> three die blocks would have been a three uh, triple skull there had it, had it been a Morgue Blitz. Three die? Risky business. Um, yeah. To try and get the high off to block with it, and if he is blocking with it, um, if he is blocking with the guard people, the guard people aren't in the cage, and if it's not, if the guard people aren't in the cage, the four strength dancer a hell of a lot more relevant when the uh, thrower moves up to a scoring position. Wow. Um, no restart arena. Uh, Vods for all matches will be in Twitch and YouTube. Sorry, Morbids. Sheffield Steelix. Easiest 100 points of your life. Ah, look, it wasn't the Blitz, though. So still the force strength for the push. Uh, continues down. Guard dodges. Thrower dodges. Guard dodges. And it's safe enough. Uh, you have to have guard on the corners. I guess the nearest guard, furthest guard. <gasps> Power's a dancer. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna be needing more drunk streams. And look, single GFI to score, no reroll GFI. That would be madness. I don't think I could bring myself to do this in a final. He's gonna do it though. Madman. Absolute madman. I mean, a bit unlucky to lose the reroll though. Ooh, no tripwire. Well, yeah, equalized in turn. F by turn four. I think that's a mistake. I guess it doesn't really matter. It it's back to the status quo now. Instead of properly stalling until turn eight. And then receiving the ball while being one up on your opponent, or re rephrased, receiving the ball and then scoring on turn 16 after scoring on turn 8. Um, yeah, look at extra 136 for an extra SPP. I mean, that's not bad. It It's getting the thrower uh, closer to be able to get block. And if he wins uh, this match, Maybe it's the level on the thrower. No. I think an Aaron scored early because he looked at his opponent's team and thought, I can handle this. If I'm ever bothered, uh, full strength dancer sorts things out. And then, because that's the obvious read to me, as the high off, buying Morg is the, uh, to mitigate the full strength blitz. That's the only rationale I have for Morg. He's worried about the Dancer Leap.
It is distracting Morbin. Uh, nothing. Nothing that we know of, Mile. Uh, the one KO on a 4+, plus, so that's really it. And look, with a bunch of AG5 and Movement 9s, I 100% would have got a Wizard and Cheaper Star. And just committed to having my guards uh, protect a full strength carrier. This guy would be a fine carrier. Uh, both dancers have tackles, so dodge not relevant. Doesn't have dodge anyway. Yeah, but I, I don't think he needed to. Um, I think it's to turn it into a war dancer. A four strength war dancer. Two dice of ball carrier on a three plus. Ain't no vampire. Ain't no vampire. Yeah, look, it'd be interesting to see if Morg's only used for three die blocks on catches, I'm going to be really disappointed. Also, no frenzy too. If you ever get an Angie Five Dancer and team with a bunch of guard step, um, sliding them in uh, two into a one on a two plus. So like Angie Five Leap. I had a witch that had Angie Five, and I got a leap. And with a blodge step, anyone else parking yourself on a sideline to get the surf on the back man on this particular setup is the absolute dream. No sideline in any direction is then safe. Uh, which is why I thought uh, Fend was a bit odd over Frenzy. I mean, four strength Frenzy seems a bit hard to say no to. Yeah, they are, absolutely. Yeah, and I really, really hoped it would be you know, something cool, like the Morg Ball Carrier to prevent the Dancer doing shenanigans. I think, because an Aryan scored on turn 2, uh, a Morg Carrier could have held the ball and just strolled downfield, uh, taking red dice that had to 1 in 9 to succeed. Oh man, you know what they say about Wrestle Witches?
Yes. Root a tree, a, a, a bit unfortunate. Only four turns left, not such a big deal. Yeah, I'm, I'm just sitting there, I'm trying to think, you know, what's... Oh, baby. Elves. Ah! Yeah, what was the real advantage of scoring on five? Yeah, it wasn't that hard to make the ball safe. Yeah, maybe it was just a bit, uh, a bit rattled by the double skulls. I think he could have made the ball safe and just retreated a couple of squares, stalled a little more. Edgy Five was tying up five men with the other fellow. Uh, yeah, catch a well and truly open. I just, I, I really don't think he needed to score that early. Yeah, look, 3 3 2. Not, not outrageous, but it wasn't something that really needed to happen. Advantage of having the uh, catcher now on the other side of the field, it will likely be two men to deal with it. And then that's two men that's not flooding the right. And as everyone knows, this isn't really the scoring threat, although it could be. It's really this one. Next turn. <laughs> well, they mean the turn after next once he's uh, somewhere useful. Yeah, but the clock management. Yeah, definitely. No oh, man, no. A, a GFI without a reroll. I don't know, I, I think I would have just retreated and caged and looked to make a GFI on a turn that I had a reroll. I mean, that's why you pick up the dodge skill, the catch skill, and the pass skill as an elf. It's so you can pass to a guy who catches it with a catch and then dodge it, or, you know, anyone dodges with a dodge. It's so you don't really need team rolls, and the team rerolls really are for gross you know, spats of misfortune. You'd assume so. I, I don't think that these movement guys are here by, by chance. Uh, but now I don't have enough sidestep to make that a bit too difficult for for him. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Johnny. Absolutely. You you think they would know how to. An Aaron will stop it though. Uh sidestep lineman and, and then maybe risk a catcher. And the tree. And two men here. A man here. And a mirror on the other side. And there's just no way to get the desirable uh, all the squares from behind filled. Uh so the sidestepper always just steps out. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good point, six volt. No way. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No way. He's not throwing over Aji Man. There's no way that's happening. That'd be madness.
Good. <laughs> I didn't think so. Nice. See, so, yeah, look, forced into a slightly riskier play. Uh, throw is not able to make a uh, handoff into a throw. I guess it's pretty much the same as he did. So, does seem to like these uh, thrower to throw our handoffs. Uh, I don't think it's any coincidence, although the kick has been towards the non agi guy. The throw to the agi guy. Uh, the handoff's always been to the agi guy. Edgy guy then has the superior throw and makes you know the length of the field without too much of an issue. Uh, so then the initial handoff is always going to be the catch without catch for one of the throwers. So in this instance, instead of throwing to a uh, thrower who then throws to a catcher, or handing off to a thrower who throws to a catcher, hand off to a dancer who hands throw to a dancer who uh, hands off to the catcher. And that's the same sort of risk. Yeah, look, it's really risky. Look, I'm sure he'll pop into chat after the game, and we'll say, Yo, score an early willy-nilly. What's going on, sir? And he'll just say, uh, either, you know, oh, that's just what I do, or he'll say, I've watched the last ten matches that my opponent played, and I was confident that he will just mess up the offense, or, you know, there'll be, I'm sure there'll be some sort of rationale. I mean, no reroll woodies. Yeah, I absolutely agree with scoring as soon as you get the ball on one in thirty-six plays. Uh, if you've got no rerolls, but a team like this doesn't need to make those sorts of risks. Yeah, absolutely. He could have stalled the initial drive for eight turns. And look, without a ton of removals, I think uh, he's just really waiting for a mistake. And a single mistake from the high elf. Um, or, you know, an another unlucky double skulls that burns a reroll into, you know, the greedy GFI that we saw. A greedy GFI elsewhere. We did see on turn two the four strength guy making a GFI to tag a, a catcher that didn't really need to be tagged. Oh, uh, I, I did. I did reply, so we don't talk about wrestle witches here. Yeah? It's it's the one form of censorship I impose on chat. It's the wrestle witch. You know, racism fine, political discussion fine, religious discussion fine, but don't talk about wrestle witches. <laughs> <laughs> nice meme. Wrestle is fine on a witch. I would never get wrestle on a witch, personally. I don't want them on the ground ever. Yeah, look, absolutely. It's not wrong, but the coach that then gets you equalized in your own drive. So let's say that uh, an Aaron scored on turn two. Uh, High Elf stalls till turn 8 and scores. High Elf has equalized uh, Wood Elf's drive. Then High Elf just needs to score in 8. And can do whatever he want. He can hold on a Morgue, he can hold on 4 strength, he can just cage and chill. And... You know, outside of leaps in, nothing's really stopping him. 1 in 9's for Morgue on the double power, double stumbles on a red die block. Um, now look, you can always fix Frenzy if, they're, if you do are doing something dumb into a cage. Yeah, you cancel the corners already at the front. You just add, hopefully you've got one guard, add guard to the back, and you've made your one dice uh, into a two dice. So I, I really don't mind Frenzy on ball, on cage divers. I don't hate him, I just don't want my witches on the ground. Yeah, it, it's more that in Cole, people will foul any witch. People foul unskilled linemen just willy-nilly. And there is, for whatever reason, on the internet forums, anywhere, people will say, you should foul a witch and a war dancer. And so if there's ever a witch on a, or a war dancer on the ground, someone's going to foul it. It's not strictly bad. Even if they're ten men down, 
they might still go and try to fail that witch or war dancer. Just because they read in Knorr's guide, you should fail witches and war dancers. It's not wrong. But there are times to do it and times not to do it, and they'll do it every single time. And so not having a witch and not having a war dancer on the ground is uh, something I try to do. To me personally. I don't hate witches. I don't hate wrestle witches. I think it's valid. But for call matchups, I probably wouldn't. Yeah, but that's what that's what's worse, Six Salt, is that people will do it even if down men. Um look the woodies aren't radically harder, uh radically faster, they're not radically stronger. I mean, aside from the high elves completely lacking tackle. They're not hugely outclassed. You know, adequate dodge everywhere. Three men without dodge. Woody's have two men without dodge. Both have four strength options, both have agi options, both have eight movement options. Yes, Conflex, you are you are fascist. Yeah. These <laughs> Yash has got us covered on the always foul. Regardless of situation, and that's why I don't get it. So some guy is has lost his ball. The the witch has wrestled him to the ground. He's cleared away all the assists, and he's potatoed his ball somewhere dumb that I can blitz. Rather than go and protect the ball, he's gonna see the witch on or on the ground and say, "I'm gonna foul this because I know that I'm supposed to," and then I just go and sack the ball anyway. But that's Cole, and that's against middling players, and, you know, your average Cole opponent. And then you just go and sack him and take the ball again. But yeah, no, which is not on the ground. If you can have Blodge Step not on the ground, versus a Wrestle Witch on the ground, I would rather the Blodge Step not on the ground. The playstyle shouldn't change. <laughs> oh man. No, don't don't play in a manner that encourages concessions. That would just be rude. Um, all right, turn seven for Woody's. Would want a uh, scoring catcher. I think that will definitely happen. There's no cheeky midfield catcher. There is, however, the cheeky thrower. So uh, a good read on the High Elf in that he wants to hand off to the thrower and have the thrower not marked to then run downfield and throw to the edgy guy once he dodges out or something to that effect. Uh, by tagging the tree the thrower has to catch it in a tackle zone. Uh, we have 3 plus in, 2 plus out and some squares denied. Uh, so I like the tree position. And yeah, will we see pass block relevant? There was speculation earlier as to what it was for. I wouldn't hate them uh, here and here, allowing you to get to uh, both sides.
Yeah, look, once, once again, the, the thrower, the likely go-to target. The dilemma is, by being this close with the pass block catches, uh, seven move guy just out, out maneuvers them. However, if he's not expecting it, uh, one, two, three, maybe. Snake's inevitable. Oh yeah, there's there's a number of benefits. Not it won't, it won't do much this turn, um, but there'll be a lot of people that aren't paying attention. Uh, pass block can harass the thrower. So one, two, three. We did sort of talk about the thrower ending up in this square. Uh, so tagging a guy that's throwing the ball uh, makes the throw harder, also giving you an intercept chance from the front. Double tagging a receiver. There have been times. Rephrase, there was one team where I picked pass block, and if I just changed the way I played a little bit, I was able to almost encourage them to pass to a specific person that they weren't expecting the pass block to come across. Remember there was a, an elf thrower who was doing a quick pass to a receiver, and me pass block went in and back and tagged both, and made both the catch and the pass harder, which I thought was good. There's less strictly about intercepting and more about making stuff harder. And then look, just re-rolling the intercept with the catch skill. Catch skill? Catch skill. Um, if unmarked, by plus twice, not even hard. Or if tagged, two shots at the six, not even hard. Hmm. Final reroll gone to to push a blodge stepper without tackle. I guess he really wanted to free the thrower for a turn eight score. I mean, he catch now without all the the handoff to the thrower than Gary should. He's only turned 7 for the high off, has the capacity to cage up anywhere in his opponent's half. Uh, many elves open will be hard to stop. Um, he did want to do some sort of shenanigans, yeah there was the Morg Blitz to chain the, uh, the Agi guy out for a 2 plus 2 plus. Or even just chain off the Dancer for a 2 plus 2 plus with dodge. No, strong, strong arm, no effect on blocks. Uh, did did get the Kaz on a catch there. No real GFIs. Hmm. Well, look, I guess technically did have uh, a couple scoring options. It would really want to be the catcher though, with no rerolls. And so it's really just one, and that one's thoroughly tied up at the moment.
man's gonna be a risky sequence for uh, turn eight. Yeah, look, nothing, nothing will be hard. Nothing will be more than you know twos and threes, but. Yeah, you, you know he wanted to do the handoff. But I really didn't like that he attempted to power Blodger. Rather than a block with block. Cool, so made the made has made the throw shit. Handoff to the uh, four strength man, has the pass being a Oh it's a seven. Full strength man would need a single GFI. <laughs> oh, Vladval. So, uh, look, random, random quads on an offense. Substantially less bad. Than random quads on a turn eight defense. God, blood ball! What a shit game when that happens. Although I don't think I've seen two quads in a match before. It's a morgue, Overlordy. It's a morgue. No reals. Got to be careful. Um... I mean, it's still hard to clear four strength, man. Catches on a three plus, dodges on a two plus, no dodge uh, reroll because he's marked by tackle. Open lineman needs a GFI. Um, Morg would need to power dancer to have Agi Man's four. Wow. If Morg powers the dancer, blitz on the lineman. Um, 3 plus, 2 plus, 1 and 36. It's nice as an attempt to make the pass block dodges harder. He's real like, maybe not, wow. What is this? Now an Aaron only had 15 seconds to decide where the um, where the pass was going. It is logical for it to go to the catcher. Tagging the catcher, not bad. But now he's thoroughly boxed in. Boxed in. I really do think it's going to be the Morg. Uh, that has to be a pal. Three wow. dice for a pal, not super difficult. And then uh, hand off to 12 move guy. And then 2 plus 2 plus to Agi guy. Edgy guy catches on a 2 plus, and if he's powered the dancer, uh, he's home. However, dancer should, on a not power, step to here, as the blitz has been consumed. Doesn't power him. Actually, that's not even good. Nah, it forces him through tackle. Oh boy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Is in two tackle zones still, so it's a three plus, two plus then. Keeps tackle on him. But I guess that's not bad. This square, though, would have had all the dodges still being through tackle. And to go around then would add a GFI to the sequence. So, uh, dance it here as, yeah, more dodges. But still, look, it's a huge sequence. Uh, none of the inbuilt skills. Can easily work, but can easily not work. <laughs> um, I I do not want to play Asian emo gangsters riding chickens. It was not for me. Ooh. Easiest but scariest sequence of his life.
didn't roll a one, so scored a touchdown. Elves. Yeah, definitely. Uh, while waiting for this game, I had a quick search in cable TV, and there were 107 matches at the time that this match was starting. That's, uh, you know, 214 people playing Blood Bowl at that very minute. I am overloading. We can do a brief betting recap uh, after this match. And I have a shower, and turn the fan back on, drink more of my coffee, look at boobs on the internet, and then maybe play some games. Nah, it's Cable. C-A-B-A-L. Cable. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess it kind of was. Maybe we'll just give them 9-1 to one then, though. Every match that gets played. Did you? I don't think I have you written down, Overlord. <laughs> oh man, I don't get attached to the players, I get attached to uh, the, the team's record. And when, you know, to, to lose to a quad skull or to lose to being 20 men down feels pretty bad. Yeah, you're not here overloading. Do you even have 15k, mate? I don't reckon you have 15k. Lie, lie, pants on fire. Oh man, Woody's with the blitz on a short kick, the dream. Easy peasy. Uh, not the four strength side. That would need uh, a sister Eno's. Wow. Alrighty, there you go, Thor. You want to do the honors? Alright. Get recorded overloading. You look really unable to get it through on a one dice with um, no guard and no force strength. Perhaps in hindsight, he maybe should have had guard and force strength on opposite sides just in case. <laughs> oh man. Is gonna add you, man. Fair enough. Dodge gone on the last two plus. Probably still worth. Ah, oh, doesn't even need to. Uh, this just makes it the blitz. Radio Thor. Sweet dreams. Edgy 5 things, fellas. Edgy 5. Doesn't care about tackle zones. So good. I mean, we'll get two dice, but there's no tackle anywhere relevant. Uh, there's no wrestle anywhere relevant. So I think the last uh, dodge fella. Just chill on here. That would be enough. Eh, yeah, I, I don't like the arc age. Actually, with the guards stunned, it's not it's not bad. In fact, somewhat, I would even say it was good. It does allow the two die though, whereas standing here, it would deny the guard applying an assist. And so he'd go all in. 
And uh, yeah, only this wrestle can be relevant to the dancer. Whereas now, um, even you know, risky position the catcher or rephrase risky the thrower. By guard, cancel all the assists. Advantage being, yeah, look, relevant for the for a catch failing on a 2+, plus, and uh, relevant for if it is powered, someone standing to recover it is a little bit closer, and not being double tagged. Yeah, look, everything has its pros and cons there. I would have played it, uh, yeah, in the manner that he does make the 2+, plus catch, and then has to be powered. And look, there, there is, is the second half. This is the overtime half. If there's no uh, uh, winner at normal time. So both L's will need to be conservative with their rear rolls. Admittedly, High Elf got a little banged uh, with Skulls. So two of his rear rolls have gone to Skulls. Uh, one went to a 1 in 9. <laughs> First reel of the second half, gone to a 1 in 9. Box without block, feels bad, man. It's an amazing tray. This is the hardest thing, the block without block taking away the uh, reel for the pickup, not allowing any GFIs. Nailed the pickup on a 3 plus with edgy 5 mans. Maybe didn't plan it through. Maybe should have said, right, if I do make the pickup, wouldn't it be cool if my uh, catcher was relevant? Hand off to a catcher inside a cage. So, uh, catcher here. Throw it here, and dodges to here. Edgy man hands off the catcher, recovered from the blitz, and the ball's in a cage. And the risk is a 1 in 36 to finish it. No! When you've gotten unlucky and lost the ball to a blitz, and you've used a reroll to get that ball back, and you luckily enough have the ball back in your hands, don't make any other action involving the ball. As is high off, you say, right, the one way I can stay in this game is to never have the ball on the ground. Like, that's the one thing he can actually do. Can't really uh, stop a dancer from coming and making a 1 or a red. Um, he can make it red, that's the one thing he can do. But, what, <laughs> but the one main thing he can do is not have the ball on the ground for no reason. Uh, it, it was definitely wrong. 100% should not have. Should have just been the cage. Cage recover. Uh, the guy that was on the tree could have been a corner for one side, mitigate Agi Dancer. Couldn't really mitigate the other as the other guard was stunned. Definitely, definitely, definitely should not have passed. And you also don't want the ball in the hands of your, your thrower, as every dancer has tackle, and your thrower has no block. The ball is 100% better on, uh, on the four strength guy. Movement tree is so good, doesn't need to roll to stand up.
2 plus 2 plus 2 plus for the ball. We'll want to make safer plays first. Maybe the tree as a cage corner. Shawhand's thrower. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7. Doesn't want to risk a 2 die without block. As much as that would be really nice to have the catcher in. Catcher could, uh, look with, with leaps probably still didn't even want that. Has blitz already, blitz to clear a man off the ball. Which I thought was fine. Now look, it's gotta be sure hands bodger. And look, working to get the tree on Morg. Pretty relevant to Morg's a good idea. Two nice no dice plays. On sure hands pick up. Oh baby. Wow. That was pretty quick and decisive. Hmm. Yeah, look, it's just times like this I, I say to myself, right, this is the last uh, drive of the half. Why not just hold on to the ball? He had the capacity to make it safe. Uh, let let the elf leap in for for pals. Let the high elf leap in for pals with four strength man. Ah, <sighs> rustled me a bit. Thank you. One in thirty sixes aren't hard, <laughs> and you know just giving away the ball when he didn't really need to. I think he could have sold for sure. Um. Testament to the to Naren's experience, though, knowing that, oh, I just fucked it. Uh, knowing that this square to this square isn't an intercept. I did something dumb in a previous game and did a long bomb and just punched it downfield to not lose. And just on the uh, range of my long bomb, some fucker next to me managed to get an intercept roll. And so that's just experience, knowing that standing here and throwing here doesn't give this guy an intercept. I don't know why, as I'm sure it's going through this square, which he's in the tackle zone of. But yeah, look, I, I think it could have been made safe, and uh, but look, dodges with dodge, uh, no sure hands pick up, so it is the two plus risk into the one thirty six into the two plus. Uh, no, just needs to score once over Lordy. It's an overtime format. Yeah, look, dodge not used was happy to make the second attempt in a tackle zone, so it's actually a three plus pass. It's a one in nine. Didn't notice that before. I would not have done the one in nine. Hundred percent. He fails the one in nine. Two for a blitz. Oh, maybe maybe not a blitz, but nevertheless, edgy men is getting surfed. No, no, hundred percent would have done the one in nine. I do hundred percent. I do not like the one in nine throw. No, we're not overloading. Hey, uh, hey, Johnny Five, take fifty points of overloading for being wrong. Alright, high off play, hold on to the ball, score on turn 16. Uh, I guess then Aaron would have the one turn, and uh, Wolf can't stop an Aaron's one turn, realistically. Oh, 
Might be able to take his rerolls. But yeah, look, it just seems to be scoring willy-nilly. Like, the, the blitz and the option to make the ball safe, and, just, and then just, you know, mosey down the field to score. I'm sure we've all done it a hundred times. Is got the ball, held onto the ball for eight turns, and scored on turn eight. I've definitely done that more than a hundred times in my life, with every team. Or with any team. Probably not with every team. Not because there's anything wrong with those particular teams, but I just haven't played those teams. <laughs> straight up Irish like that's straight up yeah so what's this play like if, if it's not the store and it is just look for the time to get an open man you know you know he wants to do the handoff to the thrower if so the thrower which is probably nine squares away from the catcher although it could be a bait could have said hey look uh, leave my thrower here it got heavily tagged previously I'm just going to move nine squares and uh, three plus to a catcher Yeah, they can block the throw for sure. Or strength could two dice him and be away from Mog. Or strength just tags him. Hmm. I don't know. See, look, if if the idea is to have him burn through his rerolls on silly stuff, and silly stuff being passes without pass, it doesn't really matter because it's still a handoff to a guy without catch, so it's still the 1 in 36 on the handoff. Whereas now it's the, you know, 1 in 36 to a, hand, to a handoff into a 1 in 36 here. Like, it's not making the play radically harder by tying up the thrower with the 9-move catcher holding the ball. I mean, pass block is at least going to be relevant. Maybe. Yeah, down TV and bash is definitely the toughest matchup, for sure. I know the 2 1 is my Bible. The Prophet Grind. Uh, Psalm 2, verse 1. Thou hath whom scores early shall face the wrath of of Nuffle. Wow. And on the fourth day the prophet said Skulls. Harry Bo Jenkins, easiest hundred points of your life. Uh, hasn't fixed this. It's the 1 in 36 out into 2 die. Oh, look, it is a blodge stepper. Would need to power him. I'm sure he has a plan. But yeah, it does still have the boots in hand. I wonder what it would be. Wow! Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Not worth a reroll. Cheeky. So the sequence there being... 2-2-2-2? Two, 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 two? Two dice. Uh, 
with dodge. Not even hard. And this is unfortunately a wrestle stepper on the ball and not blodge stepper. Now not even, I like that. I like final action, make a bunch of twos and GFIs. Um, ordinary rolled it, over time holding onto the rerolls on, on the blitz not really worth it. But now huge pressure. Uh, you know he's just gonna, well the, the, the play is to dodge away. Gets to this line, so I guess uh, hand off to a lineman wouldn't be impossible. Lineman to a mate. Risk a dodge through tackle. Morg 3 die blitz, 4 strength goes across. Hages here. Other elves come down. It could be a pretty big rotate. Surf comes at the price of a blitz. And I think you'll want a blitz to free up this map. Yeah, look for a dodge lineman. I wouldn't wouldn't even be excited. However, do have one Kaz, and Aaron only had the one man bench. He's technically up one, really high up up one on the field right now. Uh, being up two in a drive that's frequently turning over, or being up one for when this catcher comes back, is a little bit exciting. Hmm. Yeah, look, uh, two for a push, two for the surf, cool. Uh, still could have one, two, three, four relevant. He's well on the other side of the field from the dancer, and he does then make the throw to what would have been the four strength man down here. Is safe from the other four strength dancer. If I had to get it on the blocker with the wrestle guy, fair enough. I didn't like the extra GFI, probably wouldn't have done it myself. Uh, it does gain extra squares. And all in the hands of block is a little more resilient to the dancer. Oh man, that's a lot of GFIs. We're all still in hand, so this is what it was. He was waiting. Oh, maybe not. Still had the reroll. I think because the entire sequence with the GFIs and the non passing pass and the non catching catch uh, were all successes, I would have made the two two die blocks for pushes. Are they those as Kazunia? Elf scoring isn't tough. I think if someone, you know, bit the bullet and said, right, I'm going to stall this out until the end of the, uh, end of the drive, uh, could potentially win, especially the high elf with his, uh, well, more so, more so the high elf than an RN. Like when he was one up, aside from that blitz, he was looking really good to receive in the second half and stall for eight and then score. Uh, because the High Elf needs to be up one by turn 16 to deal with the elf, uh, Wood Elf one-turner. It is, it is not how Elf games go. <laughs> it is how some people 
might choose to play at a certain level of risk. We'll, we'll, we'll get a we'll get a fancy post match interview. I'm gonna uh, grab a drink. Alright, uh, I want to get a drink. By drink, I mean I went into a big dump. Um, never, ever, 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 ever get a throw on a Norse team. <laughs> never, ever, 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 ever. I mean, unless you got double movement on one of your runners. And double movement on a runner allows you to really easily, even single movement on a runner, would let you easily one turn. And to easily one turn, I wouldn't hate the thrower. But otherwise, I absolutely hate the thrower. I really hate it. Only for game 1, 2, and 3 is Kazunia. Yeah, nah. So you got your you got your two zerkers, your two wolves, and your two runners. They're the positionals. Movement seven runners, pretty nice. Uh, blodge access, can't say no. Um, whereas throwers, just compared to those guys, just just do nothing. Roll doubles and get pass on someone you want a thrower, but you don't want a thrower. <laughs> yeah, straight up. Right, so yeah, looking in terms of super interesting analysis commentary, uh, Anarian has the turn 16. The final turn 16, so it's it's on... Uh, it's on Wolf to be up by one this drive. Uh, if these scores are equal, which turns out it could be. Um... The one turn can take the win before overtime. And then golden goal, we've seen how both teams are capable of scoring. Uh, overtime receiving wins the game.
All safe in the hand of Edgymans. Edgymans throw, Edgy Dancer. Does whatever it wants. Goes absolutely anywhere. Uh, maybe Johnny. I mean, neither has been substantially banged on on offense. No one's scoring play has ever been nuffled. Um, I really didn't like an RN's one and nine into the one and six after the one thirty six, one and six, one thirty six. And at the same time, two or three <laughs> of the high elves' uh, scoring plays have been either in a no real state that needed GFIs, a no real state that needed two twos and threes, or the real state that needed about six two pluses. Like, I really only think it's fine if every action you take is 1 in 36. Anything more than 1 in 36, and it's not worth doing. As we saw, uh, Walt Sitter made a play that was, you know, a 1 in 9 with the ball. And he made a mistake with that 1 in 9 with the ball, and he lost the game. Anarian could have made a 1 in 9 with the ball, and um, got banged on. Pals a blodger. Wow, really? I'd have tagged uh, Edgy Dancer for sure. At least dictate the blitz. Get to be a uh, potentially a ship blitz. There's always going to be two dice for a push. But then with this Wrestleman, at least make it happen. This guy's doing absolutely nothing. This guy also doing nothing. And while we, we know an orange is going to run it in, we know that the square to this square is not an intercept. Um, pass consumed, and then goes... That gets out of the way. Uh, leaps to here. So it's a 2 plus, 1 and 6. 1 and 36. Hand off to a catcher. Who knows? And that's if he wants to score early. He absolutely doesn't need to. Uh, and Aaron has the turn 16. The, the last turn 16 is his. He can score on turn 16 and absolutely win the game. This, this might be what's happening. He might have said, right, uh, only four turns for my opponent left. I can hold on to the ball and score in four turns. I've got two rerolls to do it. Maybe this was his plan all along. Uh, knowing that he had the t final turn 16. Yeah, exactly kills you, but that wouldn't be the riskiest play that they've made. This. Uh, this game. So now this will be a uh, a leap without. Uh, sorry, a leap without a reroll. Too spooky for me. Or a 2 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus. Wonder what that is. It's uh, 86% with, uh, with the Dodgers and 80... Eighty-three percent with the leap. Yeah, all right. Eighty-six point eight for dodge, dodge, dodge on a two plus, and yeah, eighty-three for single two plus, which everyone knows. So 
3.3% better. But that's still so scary. Plus strength blitzer. This guy. Uh, look, I, I don't hate the leap. Yeah, kills you. Uh, did you ever get to try it? The stand firm dive and tackle. Side stepping and often just have two assists uh, and block it to the way. It blocks, blocks the side step away from the ball carrier. Stand firm stands there and says, "What up?" A movement loss. It's just throw. Hmm. I reckon I reckon short hands. Turn him into a best for goals, Nemato. Then he'd be never worried about elves and always potato. It is another finals match, Dr. Mombusco. I think I'm triggering some people. It might be a cultural thing. Americans might see finals as meaning like a strictly different word. See, whereas for me, uh, like, like, like how the playoffs. So in American football, you would play your 24 week season and then the top eight go to the finals. Wow. You guys, I think you call it the playoffs, but I think calling it the finals, where the, the the top eight teams go, I think that's an accurate word to use. This is not the final, but it is one of the final matches. It is the match. It is a match in the finals. Does that make sense? I think I do have the word s indicating that it, there's a plural to the finals. Dirty Americans always getting triggered. Good old uh, Azrael, 007. Easiest 100 points of your life. Cool. Uh, high Elf, down one. Strictly needs to score and somehow stop the Wood Elf one turn. Sweet 16. <laughs> uh, if you're American, you'd be offended. If you are uh, American, you'd also be really angry. If you were not American, you would just say, uh, you'd politely just tell someone, you know, that you weren't American. Oh, uh, really? Maybe it is a cultural thing. But so when my local football team makes it to the finals and is in the top eight and gets a playoff spot, I'm really glad that they have made the finals. Too big in the grand scheme of things. Nothing serious. No worries. Yeah, strength five is usually the breaking point. Uh, some people really like tentacles. I, I would only get tentacles if I already had lock, guard, claw, stand firm, mighty blow. In no particular order, and then maybe a tackle. That would be the situation then that I got tentacles, or uh, or tail. Yeah, look, ten thirteen is a bit late for Kaz to really matter. Uh, 10 on the field now for an RN versus High Elves 11.
Yeah, but look, compared to Tentacles and Tail, Guard infinitely better. Guard Stand Firm infinitely better. Uh, Claw Mighty Blow infinitely better. Uh, well, look, I'm pretty sure everyone else that is in the finals will be uh, really hoping that one of these dancers die. Uh, nothing serious so far. By not playing for the stall, I mean, they, they've just been off training anyway. Uh, not a whole lot of blocks thrown, it's really just been the Morg Mighty Blow Blitz. I believe it is what, Vorum? I believe it is. <laughs> well, no, it, it's all about strategy. Um, yeah, look, Inara knowing that he only needs to equalize uh, and then make a one-turn play. But look, one-turn plays aren't super high percentage. There's always going to be a sequence of dice. There's always going to be GFIs, which is the scariest role in the game. Uh, if I could win in normal time, I'd win in normal time. I think the worst thing is we've lost both uh, pass block players. Yeah, look, the High Elf hasn't had the... doesn't have the tackle to deal with these Elves. Uh, so the High Elf not wanting to get in Bash Wall seems fine. Whereas, I think Anarin could have taken the... the Cajun Storm strat, being able to make decisive blitzes with the Dancers uh, to remove someone to progress the Cage. And not being too scared about all mans. Whereas, yeah, High Elf not having any... Tackle at all. Would be a bit scared. Look at all these vanity GFIs. Like, I'm sure it's there for a reason because he's wanting to plan a handoff or, or a run around the back to a throw. Or a one round back to a throw to a guy that's in the end zone. But any GFI that you make that you don't really need to, like, it, it didn't it didn't matter at all. You're just risking it being on the ground, burning one of the precious rerolls that you got left. Don't like it. The GFI count will be radical. I mean, admittedly, the the GFIs to sack a ball carrier. If we if we just measured GFIs that did absolutely nothing other than gain a square to not mark anything and not really do anything, yeah, I guess so. I mean, that's happened every turn, and he's still just called Will in the way. And he's not he's not blitzing with tree. The being based isn't a huge issue. Already has the natural assist. And then you throw us on the ground. I mean, on on, tur on turn thirteen, are you, are you really worried about Morg getting KO'd with his AV ten? I'm not. Yeah, so um, back to uh, turn one. Seeing Morg on the field had such high hopes for the Morg ball carrier. I thought that would have been a great way to stop dancers leaping into a cage. And Aaron scores early. Uh, high elves receive on a uh, on a touchback. Morg um, is the ball carrier. Surly trundles downfield. Two little blocks of pushes. Extra half for overtime. No, yeah, you don't let more kick to hit people.
Maybe you let him hit this thrower. Nah, you still wouldn't. You'd still just 3+. plus. Uh, the idea here is to deny the chain push. Uh, so there's no chain push to chain out catches. Many people that can intercept still has the generic catch. Generic catch is going to make a dodge double GFI to tag the uh, carrier. Or is he? Well, fair enough. Yeah, I, I have uh, I have a strict rule. If I have any deaths, if I have radical deaths by game three, uh, as in two or more positionals that cost more than you know ninety k, I remake. And it's really unfortunate as I've had a uh, chaos team in season three that's uh, had two chaos warriors or more die uh, on game two, and by die I mean actual dead. It's been brutal. Gotta be block. You're not scared about your little Orcsies, uh AV9 getting banged? Could be Dirty Flayer. Or Glindman. And yeah, it's your, it's your Blitzers that will go around doing stuff with Tackle. Um, well, look, I, I thought the play has been from, from turn 1 and turn 9 of this half uh, has been to safely stall and to ungrind your opponent. Not threatened by red dice. And in 2 for a palm, no one's sacking. Or strength could even come up as long as he was only to here. And then just Netflix and chill. Powder Dancer. Oh boy. Wow. The sigh of relief. Look at this guy, he's loving that shit. Absolute madman, this guy. See if his brother's over here. Oh, look, his brother is over here, on the other side. Oh, look, his cousin, and his cousin, and his cousin. Oh, and, and his mate? All in matching attire. Maybe it's a terrorist threat. They've sequenced themselves all along the ground. In their matching entire, they're gonna blow it up. Oh boy. Nice meme, Vash, nice meme. Cool, oh, Powder Dancer could catch it on 3 plus, could. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Or just 2 plus, 2 plus. But it's through tackle. Instead of making just a GFI then. Is it? His next game, got to overload him. If Johnny Five was here, I'd get him to take another hundred points off you. DP is dirty player. Because no one would ever pick disturbing presence as a skill. What a god! Movement tree doesn't roll a four plus to stand up. So, no strip ball for a uh, Agi 5 to 
otherwise go and do something useful. You know, red dice for a push on a, uh, what, 55, 60, 65% play? Red dice for a push? Uh, take 100 from Mobile Lord here. Really? What a madman. Yes, yeah, so look, double guard man's and far enough away from tree that the uh, tree can't assist. Uh, on a four strength fellow, block is absolutely going to be red. I think an Aaron could be happy with that and just bang down the receivers and uh, run away from Morg. Ah, oh, Zola. Hey, uh, Johnny Five, take another hundred from Overlord. Wow, no way! Doesn't not even a blotch step. Wow, we're all on pushes. I mean, taking out a throw would be nice in the long term in makes one turns on a deep kick slightly harder. But it's not relevant, it's not worth going down to one reroll. Ah, uh, it means that to have one reroll for your one turn um, means that you turn 15 play. If your first action is a double skull, you can't reroll it. And then, heaven forbid, if a one turn fails, um, no rolls in the overtime format. More gets the power catcher. Is in. Yeah, me either, Fan Fox. Um, yeah, not all of them. It's that the scallywag. Good old, uh, Aryan Swiftbane. Those scallywags, hippie. Those scallywags. Is it all ma- <laughs> never mind. We can go and listen to uh, Sage's commentary really quick. One moment. Well, uh, thanks for that input, Sage. Uh, always a pleasure. Wow, finally the semblance of a stall arena. I don't hate this. I do hate it, but I don't hate it. Uh, Guardman's is tied, so ball could be one dice by four strength on 
a bunch of ropey shit because he's really far away. So that won't really happen. I think this is safe. Well, not strictly safe, but not bad. As in, not outrageously bad. Wouldn't be too hard to slide men's in. Nah, it would because the guard's on this side. I was thinking there could be a blitz from the back to chain this guy into Agiman's. Not to be. Yeah, it looks like we are shattered dice. It, it's a it's a bit late. But an iron down to one reroll, so if he did want to make a, a you know, generic wood elf risky play, even one D's, even red D's, um, wouldn't be rerolled, and then High Elf just strolls into the end zone with a two reroll lead into half time if sorry, into overtime if the one turn fails. Yeah, grab tree, blitz, and a uh, single reroll. With Agi 5 catches. Uh, sorry, with an Agi 5 thrower throwing it to a catcher. Catches it on a 1 in 36. Single reroll for the uh, triple go for it. Or an extra push to save the reroll. Yeah, the war dancers have been immortal. It's been quite surprising. Well, look, with only one shot left, um, all mans. Oh, if if an iron had if any if any one of these fell, um, no, no. If an iron had strip ball, because the uh, he also has short hands. If he had strip. It'll be well over. Gonna risk the GFIs. Can't re-roll it. Re-rolls it, the madman! Well. Overtime, no re-roll. Scary days, 50-50 now. Anyone can win this game now. A little subtlety with the dancer leap that has to GFI. Used to be a bug, um, but he had to double GFI to make that hit, and the GFIs are rolled first. So because he lost the reroll on the first GFI, reroll that successfully, the second GFI also a 1. The leap would have been a 3, the block would have been a 2. 2 is a both down, so he can uh, see that the result wasn't, uh, wasn't a success. A success would have won in the game, so I don't hate that he tried, but I still hate that he tried, because he already had the game only one turn for three pushes, and um, he advised then. He does get to try the one turn. I, I would have saved the reel for the one turn, though, because 1D for a push is not super likely. But yeah, didn't even get to make the leap roll. Uh, just the double GFIs happened first. I, uh, I can see how he wanted to. Uh, 1d5 plus, or uh, 2, 2, 3, 5 plus. Let's just have a quick samba. Uh, 36% to get the ball on the ground. So 36... <laughs> uh, I, I don't think the one turns better than 36%. You reckon? Oh, true. Maybe that... Yeah, but it rolled the second GFI when the second GFI wasn't actually declared. Oh man, the War Dancer Leap Bug's still in effect. So yeah, no, you're quite right. 
rolling two GFIs because you leapt for a GFI. I thought that had been fixed. I mean, on a, on a one didn't really matter anyway. One for the leap. Oh, one in the one for the leap. Okay, so the real sequence was the leap for the GFI. Let uh, me rephrase: was the single GFI on the first part of the leap. Failed reroll successfully. Uh, then then one on the actual leap, so still failed. But yeah. I did remember seeing it on the no bugs list about six months ago. On the known bugs list. Um, because you have to click the guy to declare a leap, you can't click the guy and declare a leap and sync up the block action. So it definitely wasn't sequencing the GFI needed for the block. It was only registering the leap to that square. And it made him roll two GFIs when only one was needed. And then the GFI to make the block. Yeah. If you go to forums.cyanide.com, uh, you'll see it's been there about six months. Uh, Crush Glade Master. Oh, does it rename it? So this is secretly a leap, is it? What if you only have to roll a 2 plus 4? I don't know, but you're not really stopping um, the grab tree from doing anything. No, did it with the four strength. The four strength carrier. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, the sequence for the one turn. Um. Outside man assist. A man fills this square. Three three Ds for this square. Follows on a not take route. With this square being empty. And the two hits the these three pushing the side step up. And a man pushes the side stepper up. And then the side stepper. No reels for the GFIs, that's correct. Pretty scary. Uh, the further advantage of if it all works is able to blitz away this uh, wrestle dodge guy but have the catcher run through with only a single 2 plus dodge oh man perfect defense would fuck it up for sure oh -ho! nice weather very nice I like 1 2 3 4 5 6 Oh, it's a seven move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Easy. Hand off, no worries. Uh, one in nine on the catch. Although if the blitz is good, and he can make the final push to heal, he can make the throw without needing the catcher to be in a tackle zone. So tree bangs the man. Man fills the hole. 
change it here. Edgy guy then fills that hole and the block on the man that's then here gets the fella up. Dancer clears. Oh, does the root ruin it? Ah. Dumbles. I wonder if he's planned to fix it. There's the... four strength. No, can't fix it. Agi mans would have to leap over. Uh, Blitz blocks mans into the tree. Block man goes across. Uh, can't fill up that square. Yeah, absolutely. Now look here, whoever receives now, I'm pretty sure wins the game. So we went from a pretty hunky-dory sure thing for... an iron, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you wouldn't re-roll the tree anyway. The re-roll was really just for the GFIs. This vanity shenanigans. Yeah, look, I think it was his game to lose for sure. Overtime indeed. Which makes all these moves not really relevant. Maybe he's not paying attention to the clock. Now he knows. He surely knows. He's played the overtime format before. Maybe. Oh man, a lot of people will be out a lot of points. If he does, he was red hot favorite for the bottom half of the bracket. Oh my god! Oh my god! What? Why? He chose to kick. What the fuck? Must be. I don't reckon the overtime, the overtime bug exists. What do they say the overtime bug was? Someone watching the cutscene while the other one didn't? I don't reckon enough time passed for that cutscene to have been relevant. That could be it, sir, I'm all. I've not seen Wolf Spainson ever before. Look, aside from the greedy GFIs several times, I don't think he needed to make. I don't think he's done anything really bad. Order of the Phoenix chose to kick. Unbelievable, Jeff. What high elf symbol? Oh man. <laughs> I am a little bit Brand Hill. Only just because it's stuff that you don't need to do. And in a finals, like in generic cold matches, you see people do stuff they don't need to do all the time. Like first action double GFIs, first action one dies, first action loners. And they're bad plays. And you just shouldn't really see it in our finals. 
And there were just a couple of times GFIs have been made where I don't think they needed to be made. Or, you know, risky passing plays were, make, were made without guys with pass into guys without catch, without a reroll that I don't think needed to be made. Yeah, overtime is eight more turns with a coin flip deciding who gets to pick, kick, or receive. And nine times out of ten, the guy that receive in overtime it receives in overtime wins. Could be a blitz. Still need to defend against it. Uh, not really overloading. It's been so long, but I'm I'm pretty sure it wasn't Golden Point. Maybe. I could load up a game and check, but it's truly long, long gone, out of the uh, active memory. Now a figment of my imagination. Ah, oh, this looks scary as shit. Or, you know, having a bed snake something. And then the glorious Blood Bowl 2 penalty kick. Oh, baby. Well, look, I think we'll just see the same offense that we've seen the last uh, four times. Punching a hole, running through. Uh, High Elf now has adapted and has four strength on the sidelines. Um, you see that sort of stuff not as often as you should. I think the last time, well, aside from me doing it, or Jim doing it, uh, Spartaco in the World Cup with his Black Orcs on the flanks. Uh, really stop people from doing sideline shenanigans for an early score. First action pickup. What a madman. Although I guess in a no reroll format, not too shabby. Although he's got blocks with block and it's an equal risk to the thrower, failing the short hands pickup. But I don't hate keeping the ball safe. But I would have liked to have seen a 2 block with block first. But I guess the blocks don't matter. The only thing that mattered was getting the ball. Yeah. Whereas, had he double skulled a block, uh, he was here. You know, blitz into a Kaz or something dumb, and he's lost his edgy fall. <laughs> no, it's very low percentage. But I guess not. There are four strength catches somewhere. I guess it's a bit far away. Single GFI, powers into an armor break, could be a bit of a hassle. <laughs> Blood Bowl. Safe place first, gotta love that shit. Oh, but it's a three dice flash. No, no, it's okay to make three dice. No, it's not. You make plays that involve no dice first. So good work in Aryan. Made the screen. Has the ball in hand. Yeah. Terrible <laughs> skulls. Pretty good. In a game where we've seen two quad skulls. 
Um, but safe place first. So, look, not going to be punished because of this. Every coal coach in the world would have just made these LOS blocks and the three die with the tree. They probably wouldn't even three die with the tree. And the screen would be inferior and it would be swarmed. And he'd be like, oh, I lost this game because I was so unlucky. But he was unlucky. Because he didn't uh, make safe moves first. And Aaron, good job. Mentally four strength guy could punch a hole. Uh, AG5 move blitzer could feign a threat. I wouldn't mind a single man marking. Well, no, I would. On the left here, where there's a weak screen, single man mark. It's the dancer and single catcher that I'd be most concerned with. Um, mightn't be too hard to procure an assist. Could three dice the catcher. If he three dice his catches and gets a pal, definitely not two dicing with Morg. It's almost not worth hitting a blodger in that instance. But if you could take this last catcher out, The no reroll scoring play becomes infinitely harder without the uh, free reroll. Oh baby, you know the the play will be two a catcher for sure in a no reroll situation. Unless of course it's absolutely banged on and absolutely focused, then you just risk the one and six on any elf. Double powers, uh, Adji 5. I was going to say, if he doesn't power this Adji 5, uh, assist, four strength blitz, catch her through. Stun will buy an extra turn. Uh, depends how threatened he is. He, Wolf should absolutely send a, uh, a blitzer down. Adji blitz is a great guy to send down, as it does, you know, threaten from... From every angle, even if double double marked. Oh man, a bit exciting. A bit exciting, Bob Skills. Uh, still has the sidestep lineman, but sidestep lineman uh, blocked in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Could still happen. A catcher gets caught by movement nine catcher. And with the stunned edgy dancer and no threat to the ball, I wouldn't be too too hasty. I don't think an Ari needs to make that ball strength sideline play. Uh, he can just chill and wait for the dancer to come back, the tree to stand. No need to exert yourself with no rerolls when you're at your weakest. They plays in the tree standing. Yes, this is now the blitz. I don't like the splits. Uh, the Hiles are at a full 11 with uh, two on the bench, unless this cast happened this turn, which it did. This drive. Uh, so at 10, at 10, and mana piece. The morgue block to double mark. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I would, I would never think that morgue two dicing when morgue could three dice would really matter. Expecting a power? Come on. Uh, we could do a post-match preamble, but it is... Hmm. 
This is it. Ah, uh, the brilliant, sexy looking Vash bracket. Ah, uh, he'd be playing the winner of Pre's and Matters. Can't see it. it's on P. But it's likely Pre's. Uh, now I'm clicking through all the pictures that I've got, trying to find that particular one. Wow, is a cage around the ball? It's a it's a catch without a reroll. Damn. No pawn. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, so scared. I can't remember what I went, what I went to. But I almost clicked on female cams. Oh, forums. Forums.bloodbowl.com and female cams have the same starting letter. Autofill almost got me banned from Twitch again. But yeah, no, Dark Elf next. Or an RN. Yeah, look, it does have its own risk. AG5 was just so close. Uh, blitz on one corner, AG5 pick up, all over. I would have made the blitz. I think I even just would have ran away. Like, you've got an AG5 guy with pass that moves seven, six squares, I guess. But he can throw six squares on a two plus. But I don't know why he couldn't just chill here. No one reaches him. No one's, uh... Well, I guess they could try to get in front for an intercept. But then you just run the other way. Dancy goes the other way. Oh, look, I don't know. None, none of these coaches have played the 2-1 grind style that I think is absolutely the best. And it's become this this dicey match. I think Hadanarin just played for the 2-1 on turn 13 and caged up the ball and slowly progressed down the field. Scored on his turn 16, the game would be well and truly over. Uh, but he risked the 50-50 on the coin flip, and lost the coin flip. Payoff could have received and just scored. Um, well, no, the debate is, he's throwing to the... Throwing to the dancer, and without a reroll. It's scary as shit. The double skull is a far more likely to succeed play than uh, is far less likely to fail than the six plus catch. Um, no, I don't think so. You both have a mighty blow blitz all the time, and Aaron is coming with mighty blow with tackle. Men up, not a problem. The Morg blitz is, uh, you know, have occasionally got a power. I mean, they have they have got breaks. Uh, you can't really fault it for the first half, but in the second half, when you're the guy that gets the last turn 16, and you've got possession, with the scores tied, and you just need to stall four points, uh, four turns to score, I would have stalled four turns to score. With a bunch of Agi 5 Lodge Elves going wherever they want, even an Agi 5 Leap, a, a High Elf firing Yolo Dodges into a cage isn't stopping you. And stalling for four turns with a ten man woody wasn't hard. Straight up to Anamodes, straight up. I didn't know about perfectly normal squirrel. If it was turn 13 and the scores were tied, would you A, score on turn 14, or B, stall till turn 16 and score, with you having the final turn 16? I would go for B. Every day of the week.
Yeah, look, a statted elves are incredibly tough to stop, even for other statted elves. Uh, and our end did. Uh, to go up 4-3. When he had the final turn 16. And would have stalled and scored on the final turn 16. So there's no further turn 16s. Uh, the 4 strength guy that gets in on a 3 plus needs to power. And if he's getting the end, you've got a nice cage uh, with edgy 5 short hands all around. You can even give the ball to a 4 strength fella to make the blocks uh, 1D. I don't think uh, he needed to. I don't think he should have been scared of a 4 strength leap with a 4 strength lodge step fend. <laughs> yeah, but if you drop the ball on turn 16, the scores are equal. It's you score on turn 16 to win. If you do drop it on turn 16, you're in this overtime situation as you already were. And. Yeah, look, with, with no real woodies, I absolutely score in two. Doing a pass with pass to a catch with catch, and then run it in with no GFIs. There's no doubt about that if you're playing no real woodies. No doubt. I tied them up. I swear I tied them up, and I locked the door. They must have escaped again. Uh, no, he's not, but that's an example of when I think it's okay to score instantly. The rationale is if you double skull or 1 and 9 a block on offense, it's likely that you're losing the ball. Whereas if you double skull or 1 and 9 on defense, if you've made your safe plays first, your opponent's not really doing too much. Getting some free blocks, but it's a bit sad. Uh, he used all his rerolls. In overtime, unsurprising to have coaches uh, low on rerolls. Oh, hey, Fan Fox. Uh, as for the play, uh, High Elf just looking to screen people out. A seven move lineman, not an immediate threat, caught everywhere by these high movement uh, catches. None movement catches will catch anyone, one of whom is four strength. And now he doesn't want to give a two or even a one on the ball. There's enough guard that can be applied. To make any four strength potato a two die has to rerolls to get the 33 percent power to be a 66 percent power on a two dice block and that's just not worth risking either yeah it, it was wasted i i didn't like it corn night that's for sure uh, but it is not surprising i just don't think it needed to be And look, I'm sure, look, uh, and Aaron will surely pop in at the end of the match and I'll be like, Oi, what are you doing, mate? And I'm sure he'll have a great rationale for it. He'll either say, uh, you know, X, Y, 2 die block, this thing, 2, 1, or something. And I'll be like, oh yeah, fair enough. Because he's a stellar player. Or he'll say, uh, I was just doing whatever. <laughs> It'll be one of the two. 
And if it was the uh, or whatever, then I'll be like, see guys, Fash was right. He is rooted. The Morgue tackle zone is strong enough. Yeah, but but a Woody scoring in eight, not too tough. Edgy man's his thrower, proceeds downfield on a 1 and 36. Um, that was worth our poem. <laughs> In golden goal, if you have a uh, <laughs> an apo and someone gets KO'd, you 100% apo it. Hot diggity damn. If it's nil all at the end of half time, it goes to a penalty kick. Where allegedly, people make uh, four plus rerolls plus one for every reroll that they've got. 100% had to apo. Madman. Yeah, must be. <laughs> must be saving the Apo for a Kaz to keep someone for next game when this could be absolutely. This is absolutely the last drive for one of these teams. Single catch a threat, pulls two men down for the three die block. No tackle anywhere. If you could do it with the rest, he probably should. Two wrestlers too far away. It has to 3 die for a pal. Not super hard, but it does bring two men away. This uh, Lyman slightly forward uh, harasses the guard a little bit, stopping it from coming across. The uh, slower Lyman number 6 doesn't get across too far either. The over commits to the catcher, just dukes to the left. I think this is wise from uh, Wolf Bane's son. Just double tag it. No dancers coming to clear it. But I guess the catcher's done its job in having baited out two men. I think so too, Billy. I think so too. Based on that he, that he kicked. I mean, having rerolls and being conservative with them has been, has been really good. Indicates that he does know what he's doing with regards to overtime. Um, but choosing to kick, holy smokes. Yeah, no tackle, absolutely. Uh, sorry, no, no tackle for this high elf. Might have had it in previous matches, could have just died. Last game, uh, the last game of the season, but uh, yeah, no, none on the match at any point. Has a single wrestle that could have helped take down a blodger, but for the most part, his uh, and, and this fella. Yeah, absolutely, Bob Skills, absolutely. Um, oh, baby. Yeah, so there's no doubt rotate back to the left with uh, all but three, arguably. Open to react. Stun's nice in conjunction with the removal. Uh, Woody down two, uh, high off down two, Wood off down one for the drive. 
So uh, Woody now up one, admittedly the tree then lost to the root. They're arguably even on the field. No rerolls. Uh, Dancer doesn't get far enough to make it a 2 plus. Don't want to be rolling d6 with the ball without any rerolls. At least I'd, I wouldn't want to be. I think he's holding it, getting to a scoring position 8 squares away. Uh, has sidesteps, so not scared of the sideline. Throw secures it. Four strength guy, miles away. Agi guy blocks on a red. And the final four strength guy, miles away. So uh, looking good for an RN. Single dodge, weak screen, no dodge, second screen. Yeah, they could still see the elf screen, and it would be adequate. However, if this three dice into two dice doesn't pow, uh, catcher mitigates any form of elf screen. And a second to well, our extra scoring man's pretty good too. Standing here. Um, what stops dodge man? I guess the blitz comes on number four lineman and allows the screen to get in front unimpeded. Definitely still need to mark the catcher. Catcher to the end zone. Hands are running across. Definitely, 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 definitely not rolling a leap. Uh, and Aaron had the ball in the fourth strength pretty early, handed it off from the thrower. Um, indicates that he doesn't want to pass the ball at all. Not a single GFI, not a single leap. It will be straight up uh, walking to the end zone. Is a GFI though? I wouldn't even make the GFI at this at this point unless I really started running out of time. GFI fails into a bad scatter. Edgy man picks it up, runs downfield. It's over. Need to not roll a single D six. Uh, unless it's a dodge with dodge. However, this screen is looking a bit weak. And by a bit weak, I mean very, 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 very weak. I guess his plan is to dodge and power the blodge stepper. That was not the one. The the block should have 100% been on this fella. As this single elf is not going to be enough when an iron can block for a push. So I guess that's game. Just choked on defense. Unless he powers him. And look, even if he powers him, uh, still through. Yeah, true, the, the handoff. Two plus to get in front could be annoying. It would be blitz for a push. This blitz for a push. One and thirty-six. One and thirty-six. One and thirty-six. Wow, that is not the square. What a madman! That's better. Ah, uh, the sidestep gets him to make a block and not follow. Or even two follow to have the dancer uh, two plus out. Had the dodge not caught there. See, look, I, I don't hate this one. I'd prefer to have some sort of pressure on the dancer. Oh boy! And look, this could be it. Hand off to the thrower. Thrower moves six. One thirty six. One thirty six. But it's this one and six that's the most terrifying. Not even risking it. I like it. I really like not even risking it. Hey. 
Hot diggity damn. Nah, not even. I think Balls of Steel would have been the handoff into the 136-136 to the catcher. That would have been Balls of Steel making a single D6 without a reroll. These are all 1 and 36s, and I don't think there's going to be a single play that's able to stop a dancer going any direction diagonally. And even if there is some shenanigans, Agi 5 is relevant, Shorthand is relevant. Uh, screening men getting across, I think Dancer is just going to walk out and walk in. Uh, they're all 1 in 36s. So yeah, their snaking is entirely possible, and if it happened, it wouldn't feel that bad, but you'd still feel a little bit bad. But compared to doing the handoff to just score and win, I really like this. And this is what I think he should have done in the second half. You know, save progression of the ball, rotating well. Yeah, look, could be a leap into the one dice power for sure. If not a one dice power, no one else is stopping this dancer. <laughs> I would take away all his points, Johnny Five. No hippie, none. Which is why I think he really could have stalled. Oh yeah, so yeah, look, one one D leap, bit rubbish. Well, not really doing anything. Uh, two trains of thought is blitzing corners, rotating a full team, trying to pin war dancers, trying to pin four strength war dancers with agi fives adjacent to him. It's just not going to happen. But yeah, look, could look to blitz people down. Vigorously base. Maybe risk a GFI to get guard in to try and mess stuff up. On the outside, not too useful. Yeah, look, uh, at the start of the match, I did point out, yeah, Morg does three dice block, three dice block with Mighty Blow against a guy with a one-man bench. Not too shabby. Uh, similarly, Morg could stop the four-strength dance from leaping in and two-dicing. Morg wouldn't be a bad carrier if you were looking to play the two-one grind. Yeah, look, but even, certainly the, the downed guard guy uh, could have applied to the dancer and then 3 plus to get the 2 dice, making a... Oh, I don't know. Making a 2 dice block on a blodger without, without your block gives you at least a 66% chance to get him down if you make your dodge and your uh, guard assist. I've got no idea. Fuck. At least needs to make one GFI so the dancer doesn't immediately just walk in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No dice touchdown. No! What are you doing? Two SVP doesn't matter. It's not movement gimped. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why? Deserves to quad skulls that. Holy shit.
Oh, it doesn't know. Golden goal for all those who are you are wondering. And he just walked eight squares in. Uh, the game ends. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, oh, man, if only there were moderators for the champion ladder to, to go and paste the rules in the forum so that everyone knew what was going on. You know, to let people know that the rounds, uh, the matches didn't count if it was 12.03, and to let people know that the overtime format's golden goal, because it's not written anywhere, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, so if there was a single Champion League moderator that that posted any sort of information like that. That would have been pretty good. Yeah, but he's got another movement uh, nine somewhere. This guy. <laughs> Does that even? It doesn't prevent the one turn. Ah, classic. Yeah. I even got a Naren to follow me the other day. Yesterday, that's it. Yeah, look, it's really hard to even get a... Uh, a one dice on the dancer. I think you attempted though. Uh, so three plus to cancel. Four strength leap. One die pow. Pow scatters out. Lands here. The right idea. Good on him. Three plus into a power, no worries. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. What's really crazy, if he did have a, uh, the fuck? If he had like a second leap, uh, like leap a guy around, uh, side step doesn't matter. Yeah, the tackle on the the dancer cancelled the dodge. It's from this square, and it could have been to this square or this square, having this guy not needed to do anything. This guy could have then reacted to the ball if it was uh, a scatter out. If it wasn't a scatter out, he could have um, uh, you know picked it up and scored. Uh, similarly, if he went back and, you know, scattered here, maybe could have thought about something. If the leap comes from this square, it's an extra man in the way, forcing the dancer to, uh... Oh, not really. Blitz for a push. Actually, it'll be, it'll be a larger sequence. It'll be block for a push into... into block for a push. Or, or it'll just be... Well, it'd have to be a one dice. Yeah, look. And I dance would just walk around the back. Made the leap. Failed the GFI. Feels bad, man.
<sighs> Wouldn't be funny if the joke was on us and they changed the overtime format and not told anyone. I dedicate this song to an RN 5-4 winner of uh, round one in the Champ Ladder 2 finals. I call it an RN doesn't know. About the nastiest, freakiest little sex puppet I know. Fiona. He absolutely did cake. It's mind blowing. This one's for you, baby. Happy anniversary. <laughs> oh man. And Arian doesn't know that overtime ends in a golden goal format. Then penalty kicks. If you've got no rerolls, gonna lose those kicks. And Narian doesn't know. Doesn't doesn't know. So someone tell a Narian, and Narian's gotta know. Whoa. He stalled on turn twenty three. When he could have scored and won the game. Oh, baby. I <laughs> turned that fan back on. Holy shit. Whew. 